my message to young aspiring female scientists is just to go for it. Everyone has the right to be good in science because it's, it's the world, it's, it's us. You feel the joy of knowing something that nobody knew before. When I was young, I was fascinated with space and I wanted to be an astronaut and I uh, imagined myself you know, living in space. But then I also uh, realized that it was not such a realistic uh, dream. The Philippines did not have a space program yet. Um, and even now, we haven't really uh, sent a uh, Filipino in space yet. But I also realized that uh, you can also do science you know, from, from Earth. I'm Reina Reyes. I'm an astrophysicist and data scientist working here at the University of the Philippines. When I was in primary school, I learned about a special science high school. My peers were also interested in science, in astronomy, and math, and we geeked out together. Uh, and that started my career as, as a scientist. I studied the fundamental laws of nature, and that explains what we see in space, in the universe. Uh, so I decided to pursue that in college. I did my uh, major in physics uh, at the Atenea de Manila University. From there, I applied to graduate schools in the United States and in Europe, uh, and very fortunate to get into Princeton University, uh, where I did my PhD in astrophysics. We used observations from millions of galaxies uh, taken by our what is called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, so it's a big telescope that scans the sky. and we were able to see you know, millions of light years away. And uh, we were able to use these observations to test Einstein's theory of gravity, which is the theory that explains why you know, the planets move as they do, the galaxies move as they do, and how the universe evolves. The first time uh, I was out in the field, I just fell in love with how we communicate to the people. And this is basically why I really love medicine. And in rural areas, people are so warm, people are so welcoming, they see you as, as, as their families. There's no boundaries between. Um, me being a, a stranger coming to their place, especially probably in Indonesia, many smiles and, and yeah, and so much warm from them. I am Dubrina Lumanau, I am from Indonesia and I am a doctor. I work in different places, right? I work in big cities and then I work in these places too, in nowhere in <laughs> Indonesia. We have three and a half years of academic and then one and a half years doing clerkship in a hospital. I surely experienced uh, sexism, bias towards my, my age, right? Because I was pretty young when I graduated. And in the hospital where I was working in Bali, people would call me Dick. Dick means kid, basically, <laughs> in Indonesian.
it is always an eye-opening experience to visit these exotic islands in Indonesia and doing medicine there because the gap of healthcare in these places versus any metropolitan cities in Indonesia it is tremendous. It's kind of crazy how in one island they would not have any oxygen at all, for example. They, sometimes they would not have any gloves at all. If more people understand that this is an issue, I think it's not a very difficult task to, to solve this problem. I work on computational studies of materials. We describe the interaction of tiny particles in the materials by using fundamental quantum mechanics. Novel materials are very important from the energy application to the uh, special properties that we could use. Uh, to make new devices. It's very uh, rewarding and you feel the joy of knowing something that nobody knew before. My name is Mei Yin Chiao, a Vice President of Academia Seneca, a top research institute in Taiwan and in the world. This is the uh, Institute of Atomic and Molecular Sciences. I do my research here uh, together with uh, quite a few colleagues in this building. I'm also a jump professor. I teach one course per year. Would you consider them to be almost? That's uh, a very good uh, vehicle to refresh uh, your memory about the uh, fundamental science. For instance, how is the Earth circulating the sun? How do the waterways form if I throw a stone into a lake? When I go to rural Indonesia, I will bring my diagnostic tools to help me to understand what's going on. So uh, I will have that, the diagnostic tool, my stethoscope. I have a portable ultrasound and I will always bring it. All the medicine that I'm bringing are also mostly OTC, so that they can take it anytime without, uh, without really a big supervision from us, right? Usually when I work, we are not taking any kind of uh, financial uh, rewards, but the people, the patients kind of felt guilty probably about it. So they would bring fruits like bananas. In these places, you will also see how culture and traditions are such a big part of their lives. I think it would be not too wise to just ignore it. Going to the market in the morning and, and asking them, how do you cook this? Uh, what will you do with this cooking? When you know their culture, it would be easier for them to accept me as as a doctor, as someone who will tell them to, oh, maybe you should uh, do this, maybe you should do that. So I was invited to give a public astronomy talk in Manila, Philippines. Um, 
attended by you know, just the general public, including little kids who are just you know curious. It's uh, I think great opportunity for them and ask their questions, you know, their cute questions about like Pluto not being a planet anymore or what would happen when you enter a black hole, which was my questions also when I was a kid. And I really uh, was fulfilled by that experience and I you know, became more interested in communicating science to the public, reaching out to more Filipinos, uh, and also eventually deciding to come back to the Philippines and do my science here. I see myself as all of, all of these things as an educator, a scientist, and also an advocate for scientists and for better science uh, research and development in the Philippines. And of course, um, women are part of that and we also bring a unique perspective. I was uh, quite interested uh, by those subjects in the school. I was encouraged from reading the books and I could see a lot of uh, successful story in the field. We learned about uh, how people got to the, uh, the moon. When I was growing up, there were not that many role models. The situation is changing now. I'm participating in a program uh, in which we go to the high schools to talk to the girls and to give them some opportunities to work uh, in an advanced laboratory so that they could get a feeling about the joy in doing those uh, very uh, special things. It's still a challenge to women, especially younger women who want to go into science. So one of the projects that I started to um, counteract this, you know, stereotype of, you know, just the white male scientist is uh, what we call the Pinoy Scientists Platform, where we feature Filipino scientists working here and around the world, you know, um, from different walks of life, you know, different genders and different fields. My message to young female scientists is just to go for it. And I invite them to pursue it and to seek um, mentors and role models. I think it would be great if science can um, make us realize that we are not alone. Like the picture of the Earth, you know, showing that there are really no boundaries and that we're all um, together. And the more we realize that as a society through science, through you know culture, and through um, collaborations, and um, that uh, we can uh, have a more you know peaceful and productive society. At the moment, uh, the percentage in the uh, departments, the uh, female students are still uh, around 20% or so, about the same as uh, everywhere else. Certainly, female scientists face some difficulties that are typical uh, for women with a career. 
because you would have to balance the uh, very demanding professional life with your uh, personal and family parts. And also, if you are working in a field that is dominated by your male colleagues, you have to learn how to do your communication because they may react to things uh, kind of differently. But if you could focus on your work and science, and I tend to forget uh, the gender difference. Nowadays, this is not rare to have women in the leadership positions, right? We have a female presidents for the country, and uh, we have a female presidents for the universities. People are getting used to it and then recognize that uh, at some positions, female scientists or the female administrators could do good jobs too. I love cooking. I think as a science, cooking is so cool. You kind of play alchemy when you cook. You mix something and then it becomes something that is good for, for your tongue, right? For your tummy. I really see medicine as a life, not just a work. And when you do something that give you the most uh, satisfactory uh, feeling, I think it kind of keeps you going, right? And that's exactly how I feel whenever I go to these rural places. I've heard many young women coming to me and saying that they're thinking to become a doctor, but also having this thought of, can I do this? Will it be good for my future and so on? My answer is always yes, yes. Again, science is everyone's. Everyone has the right to be good in science because it's, it's the world, it's, it's us. <laughs>